Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. Alright, so I'm assuming you read the title of this video. I'm going to be showing you my music DVD collection. Now, I was going to just do one big haul and show you everything, but uh, after recording it, I realized that it was like 20 something minutes long, so I decided to cut it into two different videos. I'm going to start off here with my movie music DVD collection biopics, just films about musicians, and then my live performance DVDs. And then I will show you all my documentaries in another video later this month, I guess. Um, so, typically I always show you vinyl, but there's more than one way to listen to music. And so this is a great way to just sort of branch out and show you some other stuff that I've been collecting, because I do buy a lot of these. I love watching biopics, documentaries especially. Uh, and the live performances, because I wasn't at these shows, and I want to see what that was like. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to show you what I got. Starting off here with Scribble Jam Volume Uno, Volume 1. You got collection of footage from 2000, 2001, and the best of. Uh, you got performances by Eminem, or not performances, but footage of him rap battling, which is kind of crazy. Atmosphere, uh, Slug, Idea, Rest in Peace. Um, DJ Abilities, DJ Squint, you got basically the summit of all the elements of hip hop and, and they compete, they, they battle, you got DJ battles, graffiti expo, b-boy battles and MC battles. The footage is really dope um, and just pieced together very nicely. Uh, I don't think they continue to do this anymore but uh, which makes this actually that, that much more important. It's a bit of history. But yeah, I mean, uh, it was out in Ohio, I think. And it originally started as a magazine. Mr. Dibs, I think, is the one who put it together. But uh, yeah, you get, to, you get to see this big event now, you know. And um, I, I don't know, I wish they would bring it back. That would be really cool. So there's that. Um, moving along here, we got the next one. We got Minor Threats performances at the DC Space Buff Hall and the 930 Club. The footage on this one progressively gets better. The DC Space I think is like one of their first performances where I believe they opened up for the Bad Brains which is probably the craziest thing that any of these guys would have like experienced. Um, because the Bad Brains were a big deal. <laughs> and then here's the inside. Of course it comes with a booklet which um, has some really cool stuff inside. Let me show you. So again, here's the front, hopefully with a lot less glare. You got, of course, like a little intro, you got some lyrics to the music, and then you got pictures from the performances performances themselves. Um, not familiar with Hardcore Punk or, or Minor Threat. Uh, they're from Washington, D.C., of course, and they are credited for creating or starting the, the Straight Edge movement. Uh, it's just amazing music fast paced, full of energy, which was pretty much how all hardcore music was kind of created. But uh, they were one of the best to do it. Um, so I'm really happy I had that. I get to see what those shows looked like back in the day. Uh, moving forward, and this is one that I've been wanting for a long time, and when it came out I almost cried. Um, it's Nirvana's Unplugged in New York, a beautiful performance by Kurt Cobain and Nirvana and everybody else. Even got Pet Smear in there and the Meat Puppets. Uh, great selection of songs. People were kind of upset that he didn't go with some of, more, some of his more popular songs, but I think playing Penny Royalty and Dumb the way he did was, I think those are my favorite like recordings of those songs. And then of course you got On a Plane, Something in the Way, which barely ever hear, and then Plateau Owe Me and Lake of Fire, which are just I think he did a better job than the Meat Puppets did when they originally wrote the songs. Uh, and then of course, Where Did You Sleep Last Night, which is incredible. And then it comes with the extras. All, like, before this came out, I always just listened to it and I, I imagined what it would look like and then when I actually saw it, it was kind of crazy to actually see it and hear it at the same time. Um, but yeah, definitely one of my prized possessions. I love this DVD. Um, this next one here, I already kind of mentioned them, is The Bad Brains. Live at CBGB's in 1982. Bad Brains were 
jumping between New York and, and Washington DC, sort of mentoring these young groups like Minor Threat and SOA, um, Youth Brigade and Teen Idols. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they arguably were the band to, to like, want to be like, and, and they inspired so many different people to start their bands. And when they came into your town, you knew, like, these bad brains had a force to be reckoned with. You had this really cool insert here with some nice little words by, um, Jack Rabbit, who is the editor of the Big Takeover magazine. Um... Yeah, I mean, Jesus. Rossafarian, hardcore punk. You got a mix between the reggae and the intensity of, of the hardcore movement. Kind of bottled into one. It's kind of this interesting dynamic that they had. But ultimately, I mean, yeah. You haven't heard them, check them out. They're, they're amazing live. I got to see them live once. And HR wasn't as energetic as he was here back in 82. He's kind of old now. <laughs> but he still delivered and the, the band still played as fast as they were back in 82. That was an amazing show. I was sore for like a month. Um, finally, this is the last of the performance DVDs. I had the Gun Club Fire of Love. Now, I was kind of disappointed by this because Jeffrey, uh, the singer from the Gun Club, was uh, pretty much high the whole time he sung on stage and sounded like complete shit so um because i didn't get to see him perform ever because he passed away uh heroin ever overdose i believe he uh to see this um, was actually kind of cool because again i wouldn't have never been at a gun club uh show you got songs on here like walk through the jungle which is one of my favorite that they did uh, a cover of and then you have sex on fire uh, love on fire sex beat Jack on Fire. Damn it, Fire of Love, Jesus. I just combined like three songs into one title. And then of course, Bad Indian, Lost Highway, um, uh, Sleeping in Blood City, some stuff from Miami, and some of the other albums that they did, like Fire of Love. But yeah, overall, I mean, yeah, again, shitty performance by him, but still pretty cool at the same time, because I never get to see any of that. Um, so that was that. Moving on to the movie DVDs, biopics, and so forth. Uh, starting off here with Walk Like a Man, featuring Merz from The Living Legends. This movie was inspired by his album, Merz 316, the ninth edition. Uh, so it kind of just built a story around his music. And then you get the, the two-disc DVD. You got the movie itself and then the mixtape that comes with it. Um, and then a little insert here with him and production notes and stuff like that on the backside. But yeah, you got songs on here by Brother Ali, Blueprint, I Self Divine, Atmosphere, um, 3MG. So really interesting lo-fi independent film. Kind of cool to see. So I was really excited to pick this up and I think I got it for less than five bucks. So uh, you, don't, you definitely don't see a whole lot of these in circulation. Um, this next one here, I picked up because I'm just a big fan of Nirvana. Uh, it's Gus Van Sant's Last Days, sort of this uh, movie centered around Kurt's final days when he kind of just broke away from his family and friends. He went missing. People didn't really know where he was. Um, this is after he had escaped from rehab for like, I don't know, the third time or some shit. But yeah, it follows him around. There's not much dialogue. It's kind of artsy the way it was done. Um, very interesting. And the guy kind of did look at Kurt Cobain, so that was kind of cool. But um, yeah, it's not like his life story type of thing. It's just centered around his really just this dark moment in his life before he took his life or he was killed. I'm just going to leave it open to that because the, 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 the community is split on this still. But anyways, definitely something I'm glad I picked up. I, I just like the way it was filmed. But uh, a lot of people have a problem with it because it's not accurate, but it was just a movie, kind of, no one really knows. Anyways, moving forward, um, another biopic here, well, no, sorry, a biopic here of Ian from Joy Division, this titled Control, beautiful movie, uh, filmed in black and white, so it's got that like, noir 
film vibe to it. Here is the back. If you're not familiar with Joy Division or Ian and his life, this is a great way to get introduced to it. You get to see him as a, a you know, kind of starting up and getting into the music and then dealing with the music and then ultimately taking his life. Um, took me forever to find this particular copy of it uh, because a lot of people didn't carry it. And then when I did find it, I paid like 25 bucks still. So it's the most I spent for a DVD. Definitely worth it though. I highly recommend it. Um, this next one here is a biopic of Darby Crash. What we do is secret. Uh, apparently, was in Shane West. Did such a great job as Darby Crash. They toured with him and they actually like had him sing. And he actually did a pretty good job. People were actually very, very surprised. And he was a fan of the band prior to getting the role. And before that, he had been playing all these different roles on these like drama sitcoms. I forgot which one, but. Definitely worth looking into if you want to learn about L.A. Hardcore Punk, early L.A. Hardcore Punk and the germs and what they were all about. Um, this next one here is another, uh, I guess it's just centered around certain music scene, uh, music scene. Okay, so this next one here is sort of centered around the music scene. Uh, Cadillac Records, you got the Delta Blues, you got Muddy Waters, you got most Def as Chuck fucking Berry. Best casting for for that possible, I think. Uh, and then Adrian Adrian Brody, yeah, I would say his last name weird. Uh, as what's his face, uh, the uh, Leonard Chess. There we go. Uh, and then Beyonce as uh, Etta James. She I think she did a decent job. Didn't look like Etta James. Like they tried, but yeah. Overall, I mean, pretty good. Uh, I forgot his name. Jeffrey Wright, I think is his name. Played Muddy Waters, did a really great job, I think. And then Holland Wolf, the guy who played Holland Wolf. And I wish they would do a biopic on just him, because that guy just killed it. Um, here's the inside. The DVD looks like a 45, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, really great movie. Gives you the insight of, of the times and the racial tension in our society, and then the music that kind of just helped break that through, of course, with Chuck Berry. Um, anyways, finally, I'm going to end it with this one here. It's a family f favorite. Everyone in my family loves this, especially my parents. I bought them this, but I still watch it myself. Um, it's Walk the Line, Johnny Cash's uh, biopic, Joaquin Phoenix, Reese Witherspoon, who I think he did a great job as, uh, as um, oh God, June Carter. Uh, but yeah, you get to see him, his ups and downs. It's just a standard you know, pressing release, uh, not much to it, I don't even think it has special features, but uh, anyways, the movie was great, God did an amazing, this just did an amazing job with it, um, but there it is, so here is the first half of this haul of all this music on DVD, I hope you guys enjoyed, it's a little different I know, I'll have vinyl for you eventually, next week probably, uh, so sit tight, but yeah, if you want to follow me on any other social media, links are in the description, on the other side, you can find me there, uh, as always, take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you guys on the next one.